Welcome to our viewers and subscribers to yet another beautiful Bible study, lesson number eight. And I'm so glad and thankful to welcome Pastor Isaac, who you've uh, seen with me on the program many times. And also, um, I'm going to ask him to just welcome you and uh, to lead us in prayer, Pastor Isaac. Thank you, Brian. A warm welcome to all our viewers. Welcome to our Bible study, Lesson 8 Years, Brian. Covenant law is what we are talking about today. That's right. And uh, we trust that all of us will have a blessed time as we open the Word of God and uh, blessed by the wonderful promises, covenant relationship that God wants to enter uh, into with us every day. Right. Shall we close our eyes for prayer? Brian, will you pray? Loving Father in heaven, uh, we thank you for this opportunity to study again, to, Lord, look into the counsels of heaven, your law that is perfect, that converts the soul, that liberates us from this terrible thing called sin. But we thank you that it is only possible through the blood of Jesus. And we just pray that you'll bless each viewer, every listener, all the subscribers throughout the world that will tune in. May the study be a specific and special blessing to them and to us. We plead for your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right. So, Pastor Isaac, um, I like our memory text here. And to our viewers, here is a wonderful, beautiful uh, quotation here from Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. Know, therefore, that the Lord is God. Um, one of the establishing points that, that God spoke to Israel was, Israel, hear the Lord thy God, he is one God. Uh, the Greek, uh, or rather the, the, the tetragrammaton, um, the name of Yahweh. He is faithful. He's a faithful God, keeping the covenant and love to thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. And I see there, Pastor Isaac, um, right there in Deuteronomy, which is the, the repetition of the law. Uh, again, we see in Exodus chapter 20, right there in the third commandment, keeping the covenant to every generation that loves him and keeps his commandments. So, so there is the rena relational aspect of the covenant right there in the heart of uh, the covenant, God's law. And um, I don't know, Pastor Isaac, if you've got any um, view on what uh, the commandments as being righteous. It says here, all thy commandments are righteousness. And so make me go in the path of thy commandments. So how does the commandments come through as being a path, a road, that, that we travel as God's people. Yeah, Brian, I, I just want to highlight again, you know, right in the beginning, if we look at covenant law, mm. we want to not miss the relationship emphasis yes. throughout our study for this week. Right. Um, you know, the natural response of humanity to law is rigid restriction, mm. yeah. um, you know, very... Um, dictatorial at times or you know you've got to perform or behave a certain way but I think what God really wants with people in this covenant is agreement and harmony which really speaks of relationship okay. and we see this right in the, the the memory verse Brian that you just read we see there the word the covenant of love mm. a covenant of love so from God's side this is what is, um, let me just repeat it again. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, mm -hmm. his side, keeping mm -hmm. his covenant of what? His covenant of love. Yes. So we're speaking here in the context from the base, the foundation of love mm -hmm. to a thousand generations of those who what? Those who love, love him. him. And, and keep his commandments. Mm. Yeah, and keep his commandments. So we want to emphasize here, said what I have said previously, God's intention right here from the beginning is not a cold, formal, legal agreement with us, yeah. but it is a, an agreement. It's an, a harmonious agreement of based on love uh, because of our relationship 
with God and the relationship that God wants to have with you and I. So this right from the beginning, let us see relationship. Let us see a God of love that wants to have a love relationship with us um, in this covenant. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Isaac. So as, as we look at, at, at Sunday study, uh, and we've discussed this before in a previous uh, study, uh, the election of Israel, the fact that um, God chose them and there was no beauty in them that he would desire to choose them. And, and Paul sums it up beautifully in um, 2 Timothy 1 verses uh, 9, I believe it is, where he says, uh, uh, God who has called you and chosen you not according to your works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was revealed in Christ Jesus before the world began. So we find the election of Israel then, um, the calling to this covenant relationship. Uh, Pastor Isaac is that God set his love upon Israel, to our viewers too, God set his love upon Israel um, and he chose them not because they were more in number, not because they looked any more beautiful or handsome or prettier than the other nations around, not because they had any more talents. In fact, they were slaves when he called them. He says, I have called my son out of Egypt. Um, and when you think about that, Jesus was also called out of Egypt uh, when Mary and Joseph had fled there. So, so we see uh, the election and the calling of Israel was based on God's love and God's grace. And of course, how were they to respond? So as we look at um, Exodus 19 verse 6, we've looked at that text before. Um, mm. how, how did God see Israel uh, in, in the role they were to play in terms of just, first of all, their relationship with him? And of course, with the relationship of the nations around him. Yes, yes. Thank you, Brian. A, a higher calling is what mm. comes to my mind. All right. God wanted his people to have as close as possible the character of him himself because God needed Israel to take the character of Christ, to take the character of God mm. to the surrounding nations. So when it speaks, um, Exodus 19, 6, when it speaks there about kingdom of priests and holy nations, again, we have mentioned this before, when we speak about kingdom, we're speaking about royalty. Yes. So Israel, again, here needed to have the kingly, the highest form of mm -hmm. holiness, the highest form of uh, moral uprightness, the highest form of character. This is what, what God's ideal was in calling them a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Right. Uh, Brian, just before we continue, um, I just want to step back a little bit to this um, election of Israel, um, you know, based on, on not any merit from them, but on love and grace. Okay. God, God is calling here this, this new generation. You know, this, this election is continuing. And Deuteronomy 4.37 is interesting where God says, I called you because I loved your fathers. Mm. And you are the descendants of these fathers that I loved. And you are recipients of this election. Right. So it's nothing to do with you. Besides the, the, the grace and the love, the same principle um, um, existed when God called the fathers, Abraham, um, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, um, you know, etc. Mm -hmm. yes. And the, this modern descendant here now in Deuteronomy are now Moses and his people. They are recipients of this election. So mm -hmm. God is reminding them in Deuteronomy 4.37, where that original election is from, nothing right. because you, not because of your greatness, etc., but because of love and grace. So, so there's some really important questions then that we 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 ought to um, answer. Then, what what did God choose Israel for? Was it to be redeemed, um, or was there something else that He chose them for? And the fact that um, if He elected them, chose them. Did that mean that the other nations were lost? Uh, because he speaks of them being a peculiar people, a special people, a treasure unto him. 
a kingdom of priests. And when you think of priests immediately, you think of uh, mediation. Um, so, so how do we see their role as priests and a holy nation? Because we see uh, in Isaiah there, uh, 56 verse 7, uh, there's an application uh, yeah. to the Gentile, the stranger. And then, of course, in Hebrews, it takes us right fast forward into the New Testament church, yeah. of which we are recipients of that grace, that election. Yeah, yeah, Maybe correct. Can no, no, that, Pastor Isaac. Yes, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Hebrews two nine, and you you can expand on Isaiah fifty six seven. All right. Um, so I love the way uh, Paul puts it here in Hebrews two nine. We see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. Mm. Uh, that that almost reminds me of of David in Psalm eight, when he speaks about you know what is man. That, that you are mindful of him. You know, we were made a little lower than the angels. That's right. Um, that for the yes. suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. You mm. know, God also crowned man with glory and with honor. But here comes the big one. Yes. That he might taste death, Brian, not for the Jews, not for mm. the Adventists, but that he oh. may taste death for everyone. Again, for That's God so right. loved the world. Mm. So much love for entire creation um, of, of human beings, of course, mm. that he died for everyone. So this election, Brian, is for every single human being that wants to be saved by faith through Jesus Christ. Yes. This election, this call, in fact, God is pleading with humanity. Today, mm. if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. This election is for all who choose to believe in Jesus Christ. Right. Um, Isaiah 56, verse 7. Brian, do you want to expand a bit for us on that? Yes, thank you. So, so when you look at God's calling for us, um, you know, he's called us to be a kingdom of priests as well. Speaking of spiritual Israel, I, we, we explored that um, in a previous study. But, but do we have the same requirements as Israel to fulfill the covenant obligations because many people will, you know, emphasize on the love of God, you know, and, and, and negate or leave out the response, which is his law. Um, hmm. so, so when you look at Israel, I mean, um, uh, also in Isaiah, it speaks of them being called to be a light unto the Gentiles. Uh, but here specifically, uh, he's talking about also the sons of the stranger uh, that join themselves unto the Lord. Now, now isn't this beautiful? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and to serve him and love him and keep the Sabbath and take hold of the covenant. So, so right there, Isaiah is, of course, quoting the Sabbath as, and by the way, only in the Sabbath do we find who the, 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 the covenant originator is. The one who established the covenant, uh, I, the Lord, thy God, the creator, who is tight, what his title is and yes. um, why he is the uh, author of the covenant. Uh, so, so here is a call to the Gentiles. Even them will I bring unto my holy um, mountain and make uh, them joyful for my house will be called a house of prayer for how many people? Uh, all. Mercy. All. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Uh, again. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, so this is the covenant response that um, even the Gentiles were offered. Uh, if you will serve the Lord, if you will join yourself unto the Lord to serve him and to keep his commandment, to take hold of the Sabbath. And I like that word, taking hold of the Sabbath, because today we have people yeah. that say, you know what? The Sabbath was for the Jews. And right here, Pastor Isaac, our viewers, um, God is saying, for the stranger also. Um, yeah. Isn't that wonderful that God included all the nations? So, so we see then Israel's election um, as a kingdom of priests were to be God's ambassadors to reach the nations of the world. And I believe that's still the same um, uh, call that God has given to his church. We find that, of course, in um, uh, Revelation 14, verse 6, the everlasting gospel to be preached unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Um, and again, uh, verse 7 speaks of 
bringing in the law aspect and uh, the Sabbath. See, it's a very, very um, uh, important that we see that. So, so if we look at the ties now, Pastor Isaac, um, as we explore uh, how this law and the relational aspect of the law is so applicable and important for us today, again, you know, many people, many Christians, well-meaning uh, as they might be, uh, overlook the law as something, uh, as a burden, something that is restrictive. And yet we find here uh, under the title, Ties That Bind, we see here, and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even 10 commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone, Deuteronomy uh, 4.13. Uh, Pastor Isaac, um, how should our response be then as, as God's people to the relational aspect here in um, the law? Yes. Thank you, Brian. I, um, from the, 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 the title of, Mo of Monday and um, the passage, uh, the last few words of Deuteronomy 4.13, I want to just highlight here the permanence of the law. Right. The permanence of the law. We, we're not, it's, it's not shifting sand. It's mm -hmm. not unknown. It's not like this today and like that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The permanence that the law has, you know, that it's, it's written on stone, not on sand, not on, yeah. on anything else, but on, 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 on stone, which obviously emphasize the permanence of it. And uh, we're going to speak about that just now in Wednesday's lesson, but just to, right. to, to, to jump in and out, um, you know, it speaks here about the stability that there is in my relationship with mm -hmm. God and God with me. And I want to say in a more greater sense, God with me, that this law that is permanent speaks of character, mm -hmm. the character of God that is permanent, that is reliable, that is trustworthy. And so very important, Brian, that, you know, we, we deal with that. But then, Brian, the, the, we also find a word that connects with the law. And oftentimes it brings lots of confusion. Mm. And the devil obviously capitalizes on this confusion. The, the word I'm thinking of, Brian, is grace. Okay. You know, when we speak of the law and the permanence of the law, does grace then annul the law? We just said, you know, the law is permanent, written on stone. But then we read very strongly in the New Testament about grace. Does grace annul the law? So, so that's a very important uh, question to answer. And um, many, many well-meaning Christians, again, look at grace uh, and, and, and misquote many of Paul's statements that, you know, uh, because of grace, you are saved and not of works, which is the law. Um, and yet very, the very next text here, he says, and God has created us as his workmanship, uh, created unto good works. Um, so as you look at the law, it's part and parcel of the covenant. And Pastor Isaac, I, I like in the heart of the law, Exodus 20 verse mm. 6 says, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep the commandments. Amen. <laughs> I mean, uh, and that's where Jesus would have got it from because he's the lawgiver when he quoted, yes. the, I mean, many of us know very, very well, uh, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so, so right there in, in the heart of the law, God saying he will show mercy, um, uh, which is grace. Um, so, so, so God's grace, in fact, Paul puts it this way here. And I'd like us to read that there. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, perhaps maybe you can just turn to there, Pastor Isaac, uh, Romans chapter 3. Uh, I believe it's, um, okay, I'm not going to, okay, I'm going to stop there. Maybe you can just read it for us there instead of me sharing my screen there. Romans chapter 3, I believe it's in verses 29. Uh, you know, he answers it so, so well, Paul, um, okay, if I can just find it very quickly, it's not 3 verses 29, sorry, um, okay, so verses 20, 
Uh, Pastor Isaac, you will read there for uh, for us then. Um, uh, where is it here? Not boasting. Ah, verse 31. I'd like you to read verses 31. But I'm going to read here verses uh, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we discussed the fact that the commandments are, is, 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 is the glory of God. Is a, a transcript of his character. I think you're going to elaborate on that uh, later on. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but we need to know what is the definition for sin. And, and we find it very clearly in 1 John 3 verse 4. Sin is the transgression of the law. Right. So yes. for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And here's verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, so there's the grace of God. His redemption. Uh, for us, that he became a propitiation through faith in his blood, um, that we are saved through the gift of Jesus for us. And, and now that we are in a saving relationship, uh, Paul says now in verse 28, therefore, we can conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And now read for us in verse 31, then Pastor Isaac. Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. Hallelujah. And that word establish would be also fulfill, keep, uh, do, as we go look at some of these adjectives in terms of our response to God's grace. So, so I see in that then God's grace does not annul, but rather you just read it establishes, Establish. uh, confirms, um, uh, makes it very abundantly clear that God's law is, is permanent. Uh, and, and he says, I am the Lord, I change not. Um, Malachi mm -hmm. 3 verses mm -hmm. 6, right? We'll look at it just now. Uh, but yes. Pastor Isaac, um, in Psalm 19 verses 7, um, we, we find right. um, the, the Hebrew way of using parallelism to, to, to repeat what is said using a different word uh, to establish something. So uh, it's, it's Psalm 19, verses 7 uh, I, uh, and, and verse 8. I wish if you could read that for us, please. Sure. Psalm 19, verses 7. Yes. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm. converting the soul. Amen. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Mm. Um, carry on there. And verse the 8. Statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing right. the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Wow. Okay, so we Verse see nine. there, uh, Pastor Isaac, uh, thank you very much. We see the law of the Lord is perfect, converts the soul. And then it, another word is used, the testimony of the Lord. Uh, of course, that was written on the Ten Commandments. We also understand the law as being the Torah, uh, which will include the first five books of uh, the Old Testament written by Moses, the Pentateuch, uh, but it mm -hmm. says here, um, this statutes of the law are right, rejoicing the heart. And then it says the commandment of the law. And then he brings in verse nine, the judgments of the Lord are altogether true and perfect. So, so it's interesting how uh, David ties in law, commandments, testimonies, statutes um, as being that which ought to be our response because it's perfect it's enlightening mm -hmm. it's converting uh it establishes us in the path of righteousness uh anything that you would like to uh, add on to that there pastor isaac as we look at um these different aspects here um maybe if i could ask you this question here pastor isaac um think of someone that you have a close relationship with with them now now imagine if there were no boundaries no rules no norms I mean, what, what, what kind of a relationship would that be? I mean, if, yes. if, if either person decides, well, you know, this is how I want to, you know, relate in the relationship. And the other one says, no, okay, this is the way I, you know, I want to respond or relate to the relationship. Yes, yes. Brian, yes, in, in a love relationship, mm. um, you know, that common regard and respect 
for the agreement that there is, you know, right. as far as the relationship is concerned. And, and these are, besides marriage, just, you know, common relations, let's say courting, there's yeah. no document, there's no legal document, but we both, when we're courting, we both have a common understanding mm. of trust, uh, trustworthiness, honesty, love, and all of this obviously centered in love. Um, so th this, this is, is it's common for us. Um, it's not something that we need to educate each other on. Uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend that is in a court, courting relationship, serious relationship, they don't need to educate each other. The law of the land protects marriages. And that understanding is also very clear. You know, because of the love as the foundation, uh, the obligation is not out of, out of pressure or out of difficulty or, uh, you know, it, it is natural uh, for me to respect this relationship, respect my, my wife, my husband. And so there's a common understanding. Again, we don't need to educate each other. Also, Brian, you know, outside of, of relationships, somebody may say, yeah, but relationships, you know, it's easy. You know, Brian, even in a company where you work, yes. colleagues, uh, you know, uh, even if you come first time, you know, uh, uh, you know, to, to somebody and you need to negotiate a business deal or whatever, there's the common rules of engagement. Right. We call it the common rules of engagement. And yes. that in itself says to you, there is guideline. You know, there's right. a guideline. We have rules of engagement. Okay. So even if we don't know each other, we have rules of engagement. So in every sphere of life, Brian, we, we have this. We are governed mm -hmm. by rules, governed by, by guidelines. And this is to protect the relationship, whether it's a love relationship, business relationship, whatever it is, it's to protect. the. In other words, it is for the good right. of the two parties. Okay. You know? and so, so when God goes into a relationship with his people, it is for the good of his people. God as the, the mover of this covenant and we as the recipients of this covenant, our obligation to this covenant is out of love because it is for our good. So I don't want to be without the rules of engagement because then there's trouble. So, so, so that just takes us then Pastor Isaac uh, to, to the study on Tuesday, which speaks of um, Deuteronomy 13, 10, 13, that uh, they were to keep the commandments for their good. Um, uh, so, so, so God put these, these boundaries um, by the way, the law also means teaching. Um, mm. God, they were to teach the commandments and, and they were to have it on their, their frontlets, uh, the, the, their, 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 their foreheads, which of course is symbolic of the frontal lobe or where we make our decisions, um, all our choices. Uh, yes. So when we think about this law, uh, the is there, is there a difference between law and covenant? Because we, we find it's, it says law within the covenant. How do you understand yeah. that? Yes, yes. You know, the, 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 the laws give, gives, the law gives us guidelines. How right. we handle right. ourselves within this covenant. Right. If, if there's no guidelines, again, you know, um, the, the term that we use, rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. If there's no rules of engagement, then this covenant relationship is going to, God doesn't want us to function on guessing. You know, it's like, I didn't know that I was not supposed to. God is very clear. He gives us clear rules of engagement, clear mm -hmm. guidelines. So the law within this covenant is to protect, again, this covenant relationship. Um, it, it is based on love. And so the law is, is a law of love. Mm. And that's the central part that I want to highlight for our viewers that it's, it's a law. It's to provide guidelines to the new life of the human covenant partner as the lesson brings it out. Um, there's purpose for the law in this covenant relationship. And it gives guidelines for this relationship that I'm entering with my creator God. So then we can understand when, when, when David said, you know, blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he doth meditate day and night. Um, so, so, so David understood that 
um, it covered the holistic life of the individual. So, so uh, when we look at God's law, the Torah, we understand it's not just the Ten Commandments, uh, though it's part of the Torah, but there were yes. also agricultural laws, civil laws, uh, mm, social mm, laws, mm, relational mm. laws. There was even health and hygienic laws. Of course, you could mm, mm, uh, summarize mm. it under social laws. Um, I mean, when you think about quarantine, you know, right now we're having this uh, pandemic that's uh, rocked the whole world. And, yeah. and centuries ago, millennia ago, God gave uh, to Israel the laws of hygiene and quarantine. And, yes. um, you know, uh, they were not to just, you know, use the loo anywhere. I mean, they were to take a <laughs> shovel and go outside, dig a hole, dig a pit and cover it. I mean, we're not animals right. that just, you know, go yes. and uh, do our thing anywhere we feel like. Uh, but but I, I like the fact that um, God promised them that if you will be obedient to me and keep all of my laws, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that were yes. in Egypt. Now, um, you know, the, the Egyptians were good at uh, preserving the dead in terms of a mummy. Um, and um, many of those mummies have been examined by medical professionals, uh, been dissected to see, okay, what yes. was the cause of death? And they found many of them died of, you know, heart disease, you know, um, stroke. Some of them died of cancer. Some of them died of um, lock jaw. Uh, poisoning mm, 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 um, mm, mm, and all these different lifestyle diseases disease. that are so yes. prevalent in society today. And, and yet God said to them, you know, if you'll obey me and keep my commandments and, and, and not be as the Egyptians were, I will not bring upon you any of these diseases. So isn't that wonderful that, that God's uh, desire is for us to have a holy life, a healthy life, and, and the two will produce a happy life. Um, uh, I'm reminded of uh, John's epistle to, to the lady there in the third epistle, verse one, I believe it is uh, uh, verse two, that um, beloved, I wish above all things that your soul might prosper and that you might be in good health as your soul prospers. So, yes. you know, we, we can't enjoy prosperity, uh, a happy life on this world, in this world, if we are not walking the commandments. So, so, Again, we look at the commandments as something that's a delight. I'm reminded, Pastor Isaac, um, when Isaiah spoke of the stranger that keeps the com commandments of God, that, that holds the Sabbath and does not pollute it, that, that he will find the joy and the delight of the Lord. And God says he will cause them to ride upon the high places of the earth. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, uh, if, if like ancient Israel, this commandment was given to we can say the Old Testament church. What about the New Testament church, Pastor Isaac? Is, is this still something that we should, um, you know, uh, adhere to, especially when it comes to, you know, we, we've attached on, on the grace aspect, right? Law and grace. But what about people who say, well, it doesn't really matter what you eat. You know, you go to a restaurant, you know, the most, uh, <laughs> you know, fancy dishes and more well-served dishes than anything else will be, the prawns, you know, and the pork chops, you know, and people say, well, you know what, uh, I met a minister, by the way, not a yeah. minister, I'll add quickly, um, who said, you know, and he quoted there in, um, uh, in the writings of Paul, I think it's um, First Timothy chapter four, where it says, you know, everything is to be received by God and nothing is to be rejected if it's preyed upon. <laughs> yeah. and, and by that, he said, you know what, uh, I can take anything, you know, and, um, you know, pray over it. And as long as I prayed over it, it's to be received with thankfulness. <laughs> so I, I almost wanted to say, you know, is it okay to be a cannibal then? You know, can you pray over that. <laughs> someone's flesh Look and just say, that. okay, you know, let's receive uh, thanks. <laughs> yes, yes. Or that cockroach or yeah, that rat yeah, yeah. or that. You know, and in some countries, obviously, <laughs> this is quite common. But Brian, you know, um, God was very clear. Mm. But if we just pause on God is very clear in his word, if we just pause on that and we move to science today, right? science right. is clear, Brian. Science tells the full story. Mm. Science shows us the statistics, um, you know, and science, modern science today, 
And the statistics today just proves that God was right after all. Yes. So really, if, if somebody wants to ignore or misinterpret scripture, just take a look at science. Science demonstrates, shows us today that if you look at your non-communicable diseases skyrocketing through the roof, mm. the statistics of millions of people that die every day because of heart disease, stroke, um, the diabetes, um, hypertension, uh, you know, upper respiratory diseases, all these are lifestyle related diseases. Yeah. So really the word of God has been there from the beginning for humanity. Amen. But if someone even doesn't want to use the word, just look at science, right. you will be convinced that God's diet, a whole food plant-based diet is the diet that optimizes um, our health Yes. And quality of life. And that is what God wants us to experience, life in abundance. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Isaac. I, I had a conversation, interesting conversation with a gentleman uh, two weeks ago. And, um, you know, this was a topic of discussion. And um, he uh, supported the idea that, you know, you're going to die anyhow. So live your life anyway. Um, it's almost, uh, I think it was Alistair Crowley. Um, he was the the founder of the church of Satan. Can you believe it? There's a church of Satan and they yeah. register in the religion. <laughs> and, and, and their belief is do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're going to die anyhow. So, so go ahead and have the whiskey. Uh, he advocated having that on a Sunday and he said that's, that's how he, he put himself to sleep. By the way, this gentleman struggling with insomnia, you know, and I'm trying to tell you, uh, stay yeah. away from the caffeine, stay away from the alcohol, stay away from the cigarettes. I mean, um, while I was talking to him, you know, he had just lit up a cigarette. I said to him, that, that thing's going to kill you. That's how the conversation started. You know, I'm going to die <laughs> anyway. So I said to him, surely you don't want to die prematurely. And surely you don't want to die with diseases, uh, whether it's going to be emphysema or lung cancer. And you'll end up going into hospital. And then you spend all your money, you exhaust your pension. And then you, you, you die suffering. You don't want to live. I mean, you don't want to die. You don't want to live anyhow and die anyhow. Yes. Anyhow. Yes. So Pastor Isaac, as we look at Wednesday, I'm looking at our time here, uh, the stability of God's law. What does it mean when it says stability of God's law? Yeah, Brian, I think you what you just shared there about do what you want to do hmm. really contrasts um, you know, Wednesday's title, the stability of God's law versus do as you please or do what you want to do. Mm. God says very clearly, I am the Lord. I change not. Amen. His, his covenant is solid. His law is solid because mm. his law is a transcript of his character. That's right. And that law is a law of love. And love does not, should not, must not change. Amen. And God does not change. His love for us does not change. So the stability of God's law brings to you and I a lot of good news, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, 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 what it means is that God is solid. God does not change. Amen. He's perfect. And he gives us a perfect gift through his law. Why is it important? Because it speaks of character. That's right. And that is why it has to be stable. The law has got to be stable, as I said, because it is the transcript of God's character. Also, not just um, the transcript of his character, but it speaks of the dependability that we can have on our God. Amen. Dependable. If it's stable, it is dependable. Also, reliable. So it speaks here really of character traits of God. And so I'm thankful that God's law is stable. I'm thankful that God's law has not been replaced with grace, but yes. that his law still remains. The rules of engagement still remains, but it is, it is wonderful to not reach it, it give us direction and also to give us assurance of this God and the character of this God that we are serving. I love the law of God. Amen. So as we look at um, the book of remembrance now, Pastor Isaac, um, 
it says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 there, um, and um, it speaks here now of a book of remembrance that was written uh, of them that feared on his name. So when we think mm. about uh, this fear, I mean, is, is this being afraid? Is this being, you know, terrified? Uh, what, what kind of fear is that? I mean, I think David uh, speaks of it very, and Solomon too. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, you know. And um, when we look at God's law, uh, you, you spoke about it being good and stable. Uh, Paul speaks of it in chapter 7, that the law is good, is righteous, and is holy. Um, so wh- how can, can this aspect here of this book of remembrance written for those who fear the Lord. Um, as, as we look at Solomon speaking of the whole duty of man is to what? Fear God and keep his commandments. Mm. So, yeah, God, so, his so, commandments. so this fear then we see is not being afraid, although every time man had an, an encounter with God physically, um, there mm. was that natural mm. tendency to be afraid. Daniel fell on his face. Uh, Paul uh, on the way to Damascus and, 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 and many others, uh, Isaiah, as he saw the Lord high and lifted up in his temple, you know, he says, woe and me for I'm a man that is undone and un, un, of un, unclean lips. So we, yes. we find this natural response to man's carnal nature in contrast to God's holy nature. And this is what we see in God's law. Again, as you said, is a transcript of his character. So, correct, correct. so, so I, I would just like to, to ask you then, what would be the need for a book of remembrance to be written down? Has God, does God need to have a book somewhere where he writes these here? <laughs> or, yeah, or is it something else? It's simply for our purpose, Brian, for okay. our understanding that mm. God is ultimately um, s- uh, s- Saved a sinner and a lost sinner, if I may, may put it that way. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, all of humanity are going to proclaim and agree that God indeed is a just God, Amen. that he is righteous and is just in all his ways. So that book, Brian, is so that God can vindicate himself. And Amen. we all will agree in the end that God um, was just and right in his, in his um, judgments. Brian, there's a question that I want to to pose to you, and um, it connects with Amos 3, verse 3. Okay. If God's law cannot save a person from sin, why did he make it part of the covenant? Okay. That's such a good question. And um, when I'm doing Bible studies and and we're dealing with the law and and, and trying to explain the the, the grace and, and relationship aspect, uh, in terms of the response to God's law. Um, I always say, you know, the law, the purpose of the law is not to save us. And Paul makes it abundantly clear in Romans mm-hmm. chapter 7, you know, um, by the knowledge of the law is sin. Um, sin, correct. I had not known sin unless the law would point it out or reveal it to me. And um, when we think about God's law um, and the fact that you know, why is it that we have to keep God's law um, if, if it doesn't save me? Uh, well, my salvation is clearly as a result of God's grace in sending Jesus to die for me and for yes. all mankind. And it's by mm-hmm. that grace, that wonderful love that God has displayed or manifested in Jesus, Paul speaks of it, that we are saved. But, but, how does a saved person then relate to that God? So, so my, my, my uh, keeping of God's law is not the cause of my salvation, but rather it's the result. Because God has been so good to me and gracious, because he has died to save me from the penalty of sin, then he also wants to give me grace that I might be saved from the power of sin, uh, God forbid that we continue in sin, Paul says, just because he died for our sins. Because if, if, if Jesus' death annulled, you know, the law, as many Christians teach, 
then 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 yes. why would he have to die in the first place? I mean, surely he could have just removed the law. But as you've said, you know, the law is a transcript of God's character. Um, and, and and so as Amos says it so eloquently, can two walk together except they be agreed? So 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 this is the application mm -hmm. between us and God. Uh, God wants us to be at agreement with his law, not because it saves us, uh, um, but it is a guide. It's the path that God yes. wants us okay. to, to, to travel on. Yes. And, and, and it will save us from heartache for sure. It does not save us in terms of our salvation. But in, imagine a marriage where... The husband and the wife felt free to have a relationship outside their marriage. I mean, that marriage is not going to last long. Uh, yes. Imagine if, uh, you know, the, the covenant that we make. I mean, I, I remember very clearly it was uh, Pastor Garth Bainbridge that uh, married Beverly and I in Harare mm. in uh, 1982. It was February uh, the 28th. And... Uh, I mean, I, I had to now respond to the covenant, the agreement, the contract that I signed. Right. Do you, Brian Buddy Hall, take Beverly Truter to be your lawful and wedded wife, to love and to yeah. cherish and to, uh, you know, be her husband, uh, to have and to hold until death yes. do you part? I said, I do. He asked me to, to raise my right hand. And then I had to sign on the document. So, so... Yes. <laughs> If I now go wandering off and say, oh, well, you know, Beverly loves me. She won't mind, you know, if I date this other woman. I mean, um, not only will I probably get a pen on my head, you know, I would land up <laughs> in a court and be divorced. <laughs> so, yes, so, yes. so the two cannot walk together except they be agreed. What is that agreement? That agreement is based on, will I the be faithful? The covenant. Will I be faithful to my marriage uh, vows? Will I yes. be faithful as a Christian? To God's law, because that's the covenant. In fact, um, Jeremiah put it this way, uh, Jeremiah 31, verses 31. God says, you know, I'm going to make a house, a covenant of the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Not the covenant I made with them in mm. Egypt where they broke my covenant, though I was a husband yes. unto them. But I will write this covenant upon their heart. And Paul repeats that in Hebrews 8 and chapter 10. Um, the yes. new covenant that Jesus wants to establish. Um, not just in tablets of stone, but on the fleshly tablets of our hearts. God wants to write our law yes. because it, it protects us. Uh, it sets boundaries between um, uh, us stepping out of God's will because God's law Correct. is God's will. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you, Brian. That's, that's, that's beautifully um, painted, that picture so beautifully painted. Um, I just want to add on to, you know, this covenant relationship as you okay. made the, the comparison, you know, in a, in a marital relationship. You know, th there may be, you know, some people that are in a marital relationship or in a serious relationship. And for them, they don't mind, you know, being, having another um, person that mm -hmm. they're seeing and somehow, you know, they have this agreement and they have uh, this understanding. And I know for those of us who have um, strict um, beliefs on, you know, faithfulness, etc., it may sound funny. Right. But we must remember, you know, as God's covenant, you know, relationships out there where anything goes we're talking here about god that one moral upright covenant relationship with mm. his elect and that is why he says you know um, through through peter he says you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood mm. you know that that royal as i stated before you know the highest the kingly form of moral behavior so God is not just talking here about anybody that wants to live his own way, like we stated, you know, either the stability of God's law or you do what you want to do. Yeah. God wants a pure people, Brian. God wants a faithful people. 
God wants a trusted and a trustworthy people. So um, th that that one is is what God is calling for. That and that's the bride also, Brian, that is coming for the bride that is pure and preserved themselves pure according to the faith of Jesus and the commandments of God. Uh, another point that I want to make is that God is not only the creator, but is also the governor. Yes. Now, it, it's one thing to be a creator. It's another thing to govern. Mm. You know, it's one thing to be to create. It's another thing to govern. Uh, you know, there, there's this common belief that, you know, in a deistic God, that God just created and, and, he, and he went up and he ran away and he left us to ourselves yep. you know, and to the laws of nature to run itself. No, God is not just the creator, but he governs mm -hmm. this universe. He's present. He's, he's here, you know, in, in our presence and he's intricately involved in the affairs of humanity and he wants to be faithful to that covenant relationship. One last statement on, on Wednesday from my side is, the law is not our savior, but it defines our behavior. I want to repeat that. The law is not our savior, but it defines our behavior. Right. And that is the behavior that I just spoke about. God wants a holy, pure, faithful, mm. trustworthy people. And that's the call that comes to you and I today. Amen. So saved people live a particular, peculiar lifestyle, which is obedience to God's commandments. Pastor Isaac, our, our, our time has slipped away. Maybe in the next uh, two, three minutes, you can wrap up there, you know, the, the on Thursday study there, the uh, point that is in common with the, the covenant with Abraham and how he responded to it, uh, with Isaac, and of course, with Israel in Leviticus 26, verses 3. Um, how, how did God see Abraham and, and, and commend him for his part of the covenant. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I love the, the title of Thursday. It's two letters, if. one word, and that is if. Yeah, right. the if statements right. of yes. the covenant. The uh -huh. if statements of, of the covenant beautifully laid out there, Genesis 26, 4, 5, Exodus 19, 5, Leviticus 26, 3. They all have the same things in common, Brian, and that is if there is obedience to the law and the covenant, if I meet my obligations, God rewards me with blessings. I don't do it so that I can get the blessing. Mm. The blessing is just a natural result. My, my compliance or meeting the obligation is because of my love relationship with my God. Mm. And because of that love relationship that I have for him, I naturally want to comply. I naturally want to uh, 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 agree and live the rules of engagement. Right. And the natural outflow of a life of obedience to God based on love, the natural outflow of that is God opening his heart Amen. of love and Amen. bless my life. And we have a harmonious relationship. Mm -hmm. And so that basically sums up, Brian, the if statements of the covenant. If I, out of a love relationship, comply, God's heart melts and he blesses me. Amen. Again, in closing, then Jesus said in John 14, 15, if, if you love me, keep my commandments. Again, it's based on the love relationship. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us again for another exciting study. And uh, it's time for us to close in prayer. Pastor Isaac, would you be kind enough to close in prayer? Sure, sure. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these lessons. We thank you that we could unfold your word. To have an understanding of your amazing love that you have for your creation. Amen. Amen. We thank you that you are not just the creator, mm. but that you govern this world. And because you govern this world, it demonstrates care, love, concern for your creation. And we thank you for that. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you will fill our hearts with love. Mm. That agape, unconditional love. I pray, Lord, that you will fill our hearts 
with obedience, mm. that naturally we will turn to you in compliance and obedience. Mm. Lord, where there is rebellion, where there is, uh, I want to do my own way, I pray that you will remove that mm. and help us to understand the, the benefit of living a life of obedience to you. Mm. We thank you for these teachings and we pray that you will bless your people Amen. in their love relationship with you. Mm. I pray that we will grow and grow to become more and more like you, mm. that we may perfectly resemble your character so that Jesus may come soon. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.